How's it, guys? That's a traditional South African greeting that means hello, everyone. Yes, I am South African. I've had a strange influx of comments the past few weeks saying that I sound like I'm South African and that would be why, because I am. We actually recently celebrated Heritage Day, which means we all got a public holiday and a long weekend. So what better way to celebrate your South African heritage than going into the bushveld? Nothing like getting roasted by the African sun by day and charred by mosquitoes at night, constantly smelling like bry smoke, getting your hair ripped out by harken sticks and your feet full of devil thorns. I make it sound terrible, but that's just my sarcastic sense of humor. Although all of those things are true. I did have a kudu eat out of my actual hand. We hung out with some warthogs. I saw a literal unicorn daker. A bush baby came to have dinner with us every night, although every single photo I tried to take of it turned out blurry. We also checked out some caves and we discovered a beautiful fairy butterfly orchid hybrid garden on our trip back home. So all in all, it was a pretty okay time. It was a nice break away from my desk because I'm sure some of you can relate. I am a workaholic and it was just in time to get fully bombarded by work, which is actually why I haven't really posted many videos at all in the past month, I think. I think it's been four weeks since my last video. And I'm here to tell you, first of all, how important it is to make sure you take breaks from your work because it's really easy to get a little bit too obsessed and too entrenched in your work. And even if it's not actual work you're doing to get too obsessed with your personal projects and just spend way too much time working at your desk and away from the people you really love and not giving yourself enough breaks. So that is important as an animator, make sure that you are taking taking breaks and remembering that there is a life outside of that computer screen. But anyway, let me not digress too much. I suspect I already have. For all my buddies and pals out there just starting out in 3D animation, here are a few tips for you when you're setting up your file, a best practices, if you will. This is just a broad thing for all 3D programs, but let me know in the comments if you do want me to cover specifically for Blender, 3D Max and Maya, which I can also do. Just leave me a little note and I will get to it. So number one, make sure you have planned your shot in some way. I've said this before in quite a few of my videos, planning is NB. That means very important. I know people have different preferences, different creative processes. It can be a nice creative exercise to be free and fun and animate all willy-nilly just as the wind blows you. But if you are animating seriously with a purpose and an end goal and a storyline, and if you're doing it professionally or if you ever want to do it professionally, for the love of Glob, make sure you have all your references and your planning already laid out before you even open your file. So that means your storyboard, your thumbnails, your video reference, whatever planning you may have, whatever you need for your shots, make sure you have them at hand. Video reference is very important, guys. Very important. Especially if you're at the stage where you're watching a video like this on how to set up your 3D files. This is for beginners or people very new to the process. You need video reference. You wouldn't say a speech without having key cards or at the very least having planned it beforehand, would you? You wouldn't just jump into a pool without having a life raft or armbands on, wait. You would. You would if you've already learned how to swim. So that one, that one doesn't work. Go back to the first one. You wouldn't say a speech without having planned it and having key cards, would you? Don't try to animate without having planned in any way because it's gonna look shit. It'll look better with planning and reference and that is a stone cold fact. So stop trying to argue with me about it in the comments, okay? Seriously. Tip number two. Open up your 3D app of choice and immediately, immediately I tell you, set up your autosave or auto backup. I think it's called auto backup in Max and autosave in Maya and Blender. It'll be in your preference settings. If you love yourself, you'll make sure it's on. For Max and Maya, you can also turn on incremental save, which is a huge help if, you know, files get corrupted or you have to go back to an earlier version of a file and you haven't really been saving it in iterations or increments because that setting automatically increments for you each time you save your file. But that does mean you need to clean up the folder that you're saving those increments into every once in a while if you're using Max because Maya has a setting where you can set a limit for those incremental files, but Max just does it infinitely. So you do need to go back and clean up that folder once in a while. In Blender, there's a similar thing in preferences where you can set up a number of saved versions. I don't know if you've ever looked in the folder while you're working in Blender and you'll You'll see some files that you didn't make called file name dot blend one or file name dot blend two. It's the same concept. So you can open those if you go into your file directory and there's a little thing that you can tick say enable backup files and that's how you can go and open up those previous files if you need to go back to a previous version. Tip number three, set up your timeline and your frame rate. Ugh, frame rate. Tip number three, set up the timeline and the frame rate. So that's the duration that your animation is going to be and 
your frame rate. So that's 25 frames per second, 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, whatever it is that you need your frame rate to be. It can be a real drag if you're just going along, animating, thinking it all looks so dope, and then you realize that you done fucked up and you've been working at the wrong frame rate this whole time. That's gonna throw your timing out. So just make it a habit to be one of the first things you do when you open up your file. Tip number four, reference your rig into your file. Don't just go into your main rig file and start animating from it. Like, ew. You need to reference the rig into your file. Yes, you can import it, but referencing is really dope because if you need to go back and fix something or change something on the rig, if you've referenced it, once you've done the update in the rig file, it's gonna update across the board in whichever files you've referenced it into. It also eliminates the chance of breaking the rig while you're working with it. If you import it, you can break the rig and any updates you make to the rig are not gonna update in the file because you've imported that data now into the file. It's living in that file. It's not referencing that information from the main rig file anymore. Also referencing means that your file sizes are gonna be smaller because you're referencing that information. You're not bringing it all into the same file. So your stuff's gonna crash less and you're gonna be able to work a lot faster because there's gonna be less lag. And it's also just gonna save you space on your computer because your file sizes are gonna be smaller. It's a, just a much more efficient way of working. You should also try and reference as much other stuff into your file as possible, like if you're using props and your backgrounds and all that other stuff, again, because it's gonna help to keep your file sizes smaller and it's gonna make your workflow just a lot more efficient. It's really common in the production process to change some stuff. Even after you've started animating, someone might find that there's an issue with the rig and they need to go and update the rig. So if you've referenced it into your file, like I said before, you're gonna be able to have it updated and fixed much more easily than if you have to go and re-import the rig into your file and change stuff there. So if you ever plan on working professionally or in a production setting, you need to get used to referencing your rig into your file. Tip number five is set up your camera. Set it up according to your planning. So if you have a storyboard or you've thumbnailed out your shots or whatever, set your camera up before you start animating so you're aware of where your character is acting towards. Your character needs to act for the camera. They're basically an actor and an actor needs to know where the camera is so that they can make sure that they're always facing the camera. Well, I mean, unless their back is meant to be turned on purpose, but you need to act for the camera, for the audience. And that's why you need to know where your camera is gonna be. You also need to be aware of what your silhouette is gonna look like at all times from that camera angle. So if you're just working randomly in your 3D space without any knowledge of where your camera is, you're not gonna be able to have a clean silhouette. You're not gonna have good staging. You're not gonna have any good composition. It's just gonna be a mess. Now, obviously when I say that you are acting for the camera and setting up your silhouette for the camera, this isn't a free pass for your animation to look shit from all the other angles. It's still gotta look good from other angles. It's just that you're optimizing everything for the angle that your camera is at. Obviously, this is a little bit different if you're animating for gameplay because that's a complete 360 view of your character. It's a different story. In that case, then you are having to animate with being aware of what it looks like from all angles. But if you're animating for a movie or a series or anything with a locked off camera, then set up your camera first before you start animating. And with your camera setup, this includes setting up the correct aspect ratio or the correct size for the render output. So if you know that you're gonna be exporting or rendering at 1920 by 1080, which is a 16 by nine aspect ratio, it'd be pretty stupid to be working at four by three, which is 1280 by 960. I mean, it's okay to do test renders at half res, but it needs to be at the same aspect ratio because otherwise you're not aware of the accurate space that you're working with in your frame and your staging is going to be completely off. Tip number seven is choose the right work area for what you're doing. So if you're animating, make sure you're in the animation work area and not the modeling or rigging work area. There's a reason they make these different work areas for you. It's to maximize your workflow, make you work quicker. You don't wanna to have to be sifting through all these useless tools that you're never gonna use for rigging and shit if you're animating. Most animators take it a step further and they'll customize it even more for their own personal preferences. You can even then go and save it as a custom layout and make it a preset or a startup file so that whenever you open up your app, it's there laid out for you already exactly the way you like it set up. I think I missed tip number six. Name your objects and your layers. Name everything that you possibly can. Name your stuff so work is less rough. Huh? Huh? When you have a large number of animation layers or objects in your file, you're gonna have a bad time. And you might start out thinking that you're gonna just keep things simple. There's maybe two or three objects, you've got your rig, that's it. But you don't know what's gonna happen in life. Things are unpredictable. 
And it's better just to get into the habit of naming shit. I mean, one minute you can have three objects and it's all going swimmingly. The next minute you've got 500 different objects and they're all called cube one, cube two, cube three, plane one, plane two, plane three. You get the picture. And what if you need to take something from this file and reference it or import it into another file? Well, then you're screwed, baby. And on that positive note, that is it for today. Hope it was helpful. Like I mentioned before, I've been super busy working on stuff, which is why I haven't been uploading as regularly as I don't. I haven't been uploading regularly at all anyway. But I've been working on some stuff for the rookies too. Don't know if you guys have heard about them. I've mentioned them a few times before, but they have this really cool platform for people new to the animation industry. That's why they're called the rookies, because they help out rookies. It's free to join up. There's tons of cool competitions, lots of opportunities for networking and getting your work out there and learning matter. So if you want to check them out, I'll link to them in the description and do yourself a favor and just take a look. If you liked this video, then like this video. If you really like this video, you know, there's always the possibility of subscribing. It's free. Let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like me to cover. And thank you as always to my beautiful, shining patrons. I appreciate you. And I appreciate the chats we have, the stuff you send me to give you feedback on, and the support you give me. Hope you all have a great week. Love ya! Bye!